Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Ferrari 296 GTB. Now this is not really the replacement of the F8 because the F8 still exists. This actually sits above the F8 and let me show you the key of the vehicle. Beautiful Ferrari logo here. This is to unlock the car and open the boot. This is actually to lock the car and that's about it. It says 296 GTB here. Now this particular car has the Assetto Ferrano package which adds a lot of stuff for 25 lakh rupees like uh, weight reduction of almost 12 kgs and then carbon fiber here and there in fact it has this carbon fiber insert on the front bumper which actually on the lower half of the front bumper which actually increases the downforce by around 10 kgs at the front which is amazing now of course you can option whatever you feel like like a 360 degree parking camera and the likes this car does not have that and it doesn't even have that paint shade which you usually see with the Assetto Ferrano package because I don't like it at all. Anyway, straight away, let's open the frunk and there is some storage there. Now, aerodynamics is so important to this car that the air conditioning actually pushes air from here straight into this which flows from here right into the brakes to actually cool them and then you can see there is this hole in the light. Well. Yeah, this actually pushes air into the brakes to cool the brakes. So, cooling the brakes is super important. Now, what all kit does this car have? Well, it has got Apple CarPlay, adaptive front headlight system and a lot of other stuff which are configurable. So, that is written there on the personalization specifications. Storage space is decent at the front. In fact, I've kept my bag which I will put outside for a minute. Here, what do you get? Well, we just open it straight away. And the thing is that at least it has got some amount of storage unlike the SF90 on which the design seems to be based on. So here I think would be probably the warning triangle and the likes. No, this is actually the towing hook of the vehicle. Now this is the tire pressure device and all that stuff. So in case you want to, oh my god, this is so nicely and neatly done. It slots right in between and it says Ferrari 296 GTB. This is the tire pressure inflator. And this is the emergency safety kit with high visible jacket and all that stuff. High visibility jacket is what I meant. This is actually the charging cable. And you know what? It's a normal socket which makes this car take around roughly two and a half hours to 100% charge. Well, that's a lot of time. But anyways, at least we have some usable frunk space. And there's, of course, a light here as well well yeah i was wondering how would i take my luggage initially i had kept it in the front seat in front of the front seat actually it says ferrari here some specifications here and there there's no insulation here it doesn't need it, it says one person i don't know for what it's a very different way to shut it because then i push it like this yeah it is shut now, it's a beautiful looking car it is actually a mini sf90 the design is very much similar to the sf90 you can see the caps which are open at the rear. Now, you obviously get the Ferrari logo here. You can also opt for the lift function for the front axle just to clear speed breakers which you don't need it in Dubai at all. And the lights are very strong and beautiful. This is actually the DRL which also converts into the indicator of course. And very aggressive design. What a lovely looking car. It's an absolute beauty. Here you can see the DRL of course. And then air obviously flows from here. So, lot of aero bits on this car naturally they have to be now this thing is actually shorter when compared to the f8 by i think the wheelbase is lesser by 50 mm purely because this car's engine is smaller it's a six cylinder so they don't have to actually you know they don't need all that space as such and from the side you can see 
looks really very stunning, very purposeful. The primary rival of this car is the McLaren Artura and you can see the wheels of this vehicle. So the Assetto Hirano package also brings cup tyres and a lot of carbon fibre here and there including very stiff seats which I'll show you in a bit. Ferrari logo on both the fenders of course. You can see the mirrors are so aggressive, they jut out. But this does not have a 360 degree parking camera, you can opt for that of course. Says Ferrari here on the brake calipers which are finished in red. You can see the size of the brakes, oh my god, they are massive and the front tyre size actually happens to be a 245, yeah, it's a 245, 35, 20, beautiful looking alloy wheel design, a very typical Ferrari affair. Air actually flows from here to the engine, this is where the fuel actually goes, let's just shut this for a moment, let's get inside from here, okay. Now obviously you get frameless windows, says a set of Ferrano right here and you know what, you can pull this ahead and then access some storage space, in fact the battery is placed somewhere right here, okay, it's a two-seater of course and you can see the seats are actually very very light, carbon fibre seats, beautiful, fire extinguisher which is mandatory and the glove box is small, it's not that big, here you get a screen wherein you can see a lot of data like settings, navigation, audio and performance. Performance is my favourite because you get a tachometer and a speedometer. It shows you all that information. Here it says 296 GTV. You see, the vents can be closed using this button. And there is the vent for, I mean the second vent for the co-passenger of course. Seat belts do not uh, move, obviously not height adjustable. Ferrari logo here on the seat of course. And <laughs> getting in and out can be a bit of a difficulty. Let's just shut this. Now, like I was telling you, the rear tire is obviously going to be bigger. 305, 35, 20s, beautiful looking wheels and obviously red colored brick calipers. Here you can see the size of the wheels. It's absolutely crazy. Now, one small issue is that, you know what? The windscreen is not sloping. So how will they manage aerodynamics at the rear? So what they have done is they have designed this in a way along with the spoiler that it creates a virtual windscreen so that this area creates downforce. This is finished in carbon fiber on this particular package to reduce the weight. That's not all. The whole design is like this, flat rather than curved for the windscreen to keep the engine cool here. Let's open this, the engine bay and there you can see. Now the first thing you're going to notice is boss where are the red engine covers which you see in Ferrari cars? Actually, this engine now has a very wide angle, 120 degree V6. That's the reason, you know, it's a little different the way the engine is done. The engine cover which you're talking about, the red colored one, is right there. So it's not that aesthetically pleasing as we have come to see from Ferrari engines, of course. And this beautiful cap which says Ferrari on it, lovely. Let's just shut this. Yeah, there it is. Shut. The design from the rear is again very unconventional, again very much like the SF90 but with the regular Ferrari cars you get round lights, here you get angular lights, so you can see the indicator is functioning at the moment. The lights are of course very bright at night and uh, then it says Ferrari here, Ferrari logo right there, exhaust placement is here, you can see dual exhaust, that is actually the placement of the rear camera and you can see the diffuser treatment, look at the aggression on the diffuser. It's absolutely crazy. What kind of a diffuser is that? That's a reflector. You've got parking sensors all across, which brings me to the other side of the car. Now, obviously, the sun is shining really very bright. It's quite early in the morning. It's like 8 o'clock. Still, the sun has no mercy whatsoever. Now, how do you charge? Well, this is actually the charging port. This is where you put the charger, of course. And then it takes its own sweet time in charging. I will actually talk about all the technical aspects while driving the car. That's like a bridge which is created with a high mounted stop lamp as well. There's actually a convertible version as well, which is known as the GTS. This is the GTB, which is the Gran Turismo Bernaletta. Bernaletta actually stands for small coupe or small sedan in French. I think in Italian, it's like a small sports car, something of that sort. This is in no way small because this is more than 4.5 meters in length with a wheelbase of 2.6 meters is kind of crazy to put into perspective cars like the honda city and the creta have this similar wheelbase but this is longer and just a two-seater but it's shorter when compared to the f8 because the engine is smaller of course now here it says a set of ferrano and a lot of buttons here 
This is to open the front. This is to open the fuel lid. This is to open the charging port. And this is to open the door, of course. Again, you can see carbon fiber here, exposed screw heads, Alcantara finish. Door pockets are very chintum into. Seats are very comfortable. You know what? The seat is actually adjustable electrically only for the height bit. Yeah, you can adjust the height of the seat electrically. But the problem is everything else is manually adjustable. So there's this lever here. You pull it ahead and behind to adjust. Mm, this in a Ferrari seems out of place, but they have to save weight, of course. And to adjust the angle of the seat, you have to go out like that, which is very weird. This is to open the engine bay or engine cover, the glass, of course. And there are lot of buttons here. Now, these are for the headlight control. These are for mirror adjustment. This is for the parking camera. Here you can see the pedals are actually placed towards the right. So they are offset and you get a dead pedal, of course. And these are the buttons for the parking brake. So electric parking brake, Alcantara finish, red insert here. Seats are really very stiff, but they are decently comfortable when you're driving this car. You would really love it. So first things first, let me actually open the window. It's uh, obviously one touch up and down and you can see frameless windows. One thing you will notice that this window is not going all the way down. So when I shut the door, that is when it goes completely down and something is written in Arabic, which actually translates to objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. Look at my Arabic translation. Amazing. Now, see, that's really nice. Some warning has been given the maximum winter speed with tires is to 40 kilometers per hour. Where in the world can I drive at 240 kilometers per hour? Obviously the German Autobahn. And here is where it pulls in air. So a lot of technical bits to really make this car amazing, which actually brings me to the wipers. Look at those wipers. Aren't they amazing? In fact, a lot of cameras here. One is for roadside detection. The other is for rain sensing wipers. So this car has got ADAS features as well. Thankfully, it doesn't have automatic emergency braking because this car doesn't need it. You will always be alert because of the stiffness. And when I get inside, my goodness, it is not an easy task at all. It's quite the difficulty. Let's just shut this. Now you might notice, why is there no screen here? Yeah, there is no screen here because everything is inside right here. This is of course auto dimming. Here is the registration of the vehicle and beautifully finished. You can like pull it out like that. And here you actually get a mirror along with a light as well. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's got multiple airbags. It says SRS airbag right here. Now here you get a wireless charging pad, a cup holder. This is for the hazard lights. Again, exposed screws. Ferrari's typical or traditional H shape gear pattern here on the gear selector. Here, these are the controls for the power windows. The key actually slots in right there. Yeah, the key is having a position for its own and it just slots in here. I can just put it like that. And now it will not come out that easily. I mean, obviously you can pull it out, but the good thing is it will not move around. There's some storage space here, two USB charging sockets, no USB-C. Again, this is all finished in carbon fiber is very nice and premium in fact beautiful finishing here leather on the top no hard plastics whatsoever these are actually the controls for the air conditioning which actually brings me to the steering wheel the steering wheel is adjustable but it's a manual adjust obviously for reach as well as rake but manual because they want to save weight here right weight is the name of the game let me just shut this you can turn on and off the air conditioning vent using this now this whole thing is so focused towards the driver in fact everything is a touch control yeah haptic control and you have to just touch some things get activated based on what is the mode or menu you are in right now this is obviously flat bottom carbon fiber steering wheel with this beautiful red stitching you get lights here and let's just turn on the car by pressing this button oh my god there it rose to life and i'm going to rev it there amazing right there's a heads up display there you can see that Okay, there are multiple modes for it and the race mode actually shows you the gear position and the revs. Otherwise, you can see the speed and then you can also get navigation data there. These are the controls for the indicators. Okay, here, there are no levers obviously on a Ferrari steering wheel. The horn, horn is fine, but you can just rev the motor to go fast wherever you want. It says engine start stop. So this is again touch control. This is the Manitino. So here, there's a wet mode, sport, race, CT off traction control off and ESC off okay 
ESC off is basically electronic stability control off. There you can see it. Beautiful in terms of quality. Now this is the Emanity, no? What is Emanity, no? Well, basically it's the settings for the battery. So right now we are in performance. This is for qualifying mode. And this is for the hybrid mode and this is for the e-drive. So we just keep it in performance right now so that the battery keeps getting charged. These are actually the controls for the headlights. I don't know what this is for. I thought this is for the volume control, but doesn't seem so. These are controls for cruise control and phone calls and all that. And this is the control to actually operate the whole screen as you wish. So here I will show you that. Okay, the screen is beautiful. It's a 16 inch curved display, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's divided into multiple parts. So this is for navigation, this is for audio system. This is a tachometer along with a speedometer. And on the right, there are a lot of settings. So you can actually browse through this. So there is so much. So there's a tire pressure monitor. Here I can actually get into seeing the hybrid mode and then obviously a G-force meter as well. I can see the data in terms of what has been the top speed, 245 kilometers per hour only. And then I get to the right side there. I can see what is the charge like, fast charge boost and whatnot so it's an amazing screen it's like next level the screen and then you can get into audio navigation phone settings and everything in fact even to increase or decrease the volume you have to get into the settings so it's very cumbersome to use it's not that easy so there's no screen here which is a bit of a bummer because you have to go through this particular instrument cluster to do almost everything in the world which is definitely very cumbersome here on the bottom you can see okay bye mr Gaton on the indicator shut up indicator yeah there you can see that is actually telling you what's the odometer and what's the fuel range that is telling you the overall uh, kilometers it will go so distance to empty and that's showing you the battery percentage it will go only nine kilometers right now on battery power alone which isn't much and then you can obviously change the view as well there's a view max here you can see showing me a full map view and then i can get into another view which is another driving mode showing me how much power and torque and how much boost and all that is being used it's a fantastic screen but it's very cumbersome to operate honestly it's very cumbersome even the settings and all everything you can get into a dash function here and then you can decide how you want stuff to work so it has got a speed sign recognition adaptive front headlight system automatic high beam e-drive urban guidance which god only knows what it is because i didn't encounter it you can get into service aspect of things and then you can get into the infotainment and you can actually change the color so there's something known as display settings and then there are themes so they are like five themes and then you can change the theme which basically changes okay it's a little slow so i'm just going to show it to you and fast forward right now anyways all these settings are placed right here the only bummer is even for air conditioning i have to press this button i press this button there i can actually decide how i want the air conditioning to work so this system could have been a lot better without a doubt it's just not easy to operate now these are actually the controls for the wipers so this is to do the spray and this is to turn on the wipers there i can turn on the wipers like that yeah <laughs> it's actually something which takes some time to get used to once you get used to you will absolutely love how this whole Ferrari system works only thing is these controls now are not very intuitive to use and then relying on this screen alone is not such a bright idea now if i get into reverse now see i press this and there it actually flows like that so let's get into drive yeah there it's flowing like that and as soon as i get into reverse obviously the reverse parking camera also turns on and you can see the parking sensor so here we are into reverse again that is the reverse parking camera it's got guidelines which are obviously adaptive as well and it makes this chimey sound too now if i want to get out of reverse here now we are in first if i want to get into neutral i have to press both the levers together and then only i can get there now let me just turn off the car and when i turn off the car and when i open the door okay this is how i open the door it actually shows me the data of my drive including what modes i have used and also what is the overall battery consumption and stuff like that so the e manitino is saying that in qualifying i've driven five percent the manitino is telling me how much i've driven in race mode and all that so a lot of data and as soon as you unlock the car or lock the car or you know get out of the car it tells you ferrari 296 gtb right there why is it 296 well i'll explain it while driving let's start driving right away Right, we are all set to go, which means turning on the car. Does this whole 
Ferrari spinning thing and you can hear the sound that is the sound of the electric motor starting up we are just going to turn off the air conditioning completely air conditioning is off right now now here you can see the tire pressure monitor will actually change this to the g-force meter so it also has a charge thingy going on so since we are on ev mode let's actually get into the charge thing so they're showing you charge and boost as well and then obviously it shuffles things here now ambient light actually comes from here it's white ambient lighting and the headlight is very powerful at night here we get into first gear and right now we are in hybrid mode but the engine has not kicked in so we are off very smoothly can you imagine a ferrari this silent yeah this is the future absolute silence and the funny thing is that supercars are more heard than they are seen because when you hear a supercar you just turn around to see it this car nobody will know when it comes and when it goes because they will not be able to hear it as it makes no sound whatsoever that is the level of smoothness so basically the battery is 7.45 kilowatt hour which actually sits right rather the electric motor actually sits right between the engine and the gearbox so it is actually something like a, a round shaped uh, fryer sort of a design size i mean and it gives it a range of 25 kilometers of pure ev range which is actually very less but gets the job done you can see it's so smooth so refined and this electric motor produces 165 horsepower and the result is obviously good performance in fact with the electric motor you can go to a top speed of 135 kilometers per hour so there are multiple modes as such and that is what really lends it the kind of performance that is that it has and you know again on the throttle there the engine has obviously kicked in and it does it very smoothly the engine is like super smooth in the way it kicks in which is kind of nice there's the new Santa Fe which is going right ahead of me now as you can see that performance is quite good even in EV mode so there are actually four modes for the e Manatino, you know, and this is for the regular Manatino. You know. so basically e Manatino you know, controls everything related to the battery this controls everything related to the internal combustion engine and obviously the dynamic suspension steering and all that obviously it's got adaptive dampers as well here we give an indicator on the right and then we turn now thing is that this is a car you can actually drive very smoothly and easy without taking any you know tension because in electric mode it is super silent and this actually boosts the range of this vehicle and they're showing how the charge is working so there are multiple ways to charge you can actually plug it in at home with the three point socket which takes roughly around two to and a half hours to charge the battery up and you can also probably just cruise along when the internal combustion engine is powered it can actually charge this battery then obviously it has got mgu is motor generator unit kinetic which under braking it actually puts back charge into the battery pack and um, regenerative braking is also there now depending on the mode the regen obviously changes now if i press this button okay the performance mode there the engine powers up and all of a sudden from 165 horsepower we now have approximately 780 horsepower but doesn't this car produce 819 horsepower well it does the point is no 770 horsepower actually because 50 horsepower less in performance mode so this is the performance mode which i've got in right now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you how smooth it is to drive this guy it's like ultra smooth the steering is also quite light and everything but obviously since we are driving a ferrari smoothness is not what the agenda is right so uh, we have a mode here which is e-drive so basically e-drive is not allowed because i think the battery juice is less so e-drive is pure electric mode there's something known as hybrid mode which works both the engine as well as the battery there's performance mode which kinks in the engine and gives you 770 horsepower and then there is this mode which is qualifying mode now what is qualifying it's a f1 term which we'll talk about in a bit before that we'll just come to a halt here i actually get into qualifying mode i get into sport here okay and uh, we will also shift this okay we are going to change the details in the instrument cluster I, I don't like the way this is to handle but anyways we are going to come to the g-force meter left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor holy moly okay this car goes from saving the earth to absolute madness in a blink of an eyelid because performance becomes bonkers so what happens in qualifying mode is it gives you all the electric assist as well as full power it's like full bananas full beans and then it it pulls like crazy i can hear some sound coming from behind like a hissing sound so basically this is a 3 liter engine it's not a 2.9 liter engine like ferrari would want you to believe because this is 2992 cc which actually turns out to be 3 liters because it's closer to 3 liters than 2.9 liters but ferrari did not name it 306 because they I mean, it would just be stupid to name it 306 because 
obviously that is a Peugeot car and uh, now the 306 is discontinued it was replaced by the 307 and now the 308 is on sale so why would Ferrari want to call their car a Peugeot obviously not so that's the reason why they did not name it 306 just named it 296 which is 2.9 liters six cylinders so downsizing has happened two cylinders have been reduced in this car and why has that been done well it has been purely done to improve the efficiency why does a Ferrari need to be more efficient that's a good food for thought okay we are going to take the turn here and oh my god the brakes are really very strong so it revs like crazy the motor is very fast in terms of rev and the body control is fantastic steering is super duper fast the best thing is now this engine honestly is tuned so beautifully well it doesn't let you know that twin turbos are working underneath it doesn't let you know there is battery power which is assisting it is actually more like a naturally aspirated engine the character ferrari actually calls it the piccola v12 which actually means mini v12 because the sound is supposedly like a v12 engine it's not really there but still it sounds quite nice so what is just a six cylinder engine so this engine is producing 819 horsepower combined the engine alone the internal combustion engine is able to put out 654 horsepower now that 819 horsepower comes in at a very high 8000 rpm we've got 740 newton meters of torque at 6250 rpm the result is 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.9 seconds which is the same as the f8 but uh, the f8 triboto but okay there's a mclaren right there but the difference here is that from 100 to 200 kilometers per hour it is actually faster by 0.3 seconds so 0 to 200 kilometers per hour takes just 7.3 seconds which by the way is the same as the bugatti veyron This car has a better power to weight ratio than the Bugatti Veyron which is unbelievable right of course it is unbelievable and how did they achieve it well there is quite a lot of grunt from this motor there is no body roll body control is absolutely fantastic steering is super quick and turbo lag is literally not there only how did they manage to give this car zero turbo lag well very simple what they did was uh, they put in a battery right so with electric motors producing 100% torque from 0 rpm there is no turbo lag in this car absolutely none it just gets away very fast indeed but you know what is actually faster than the Bugatti Veyron from 100 to 200 kilometers per hour yes how because uh, the Bugatti Veyron goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.6 seconds and 0 to 200 kilometers per hour in 7.3 seconds this car goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.9 seconds and 0 to 200 kilometers per hour in 7.3 seconds which makes it technically faster but the Veyron claws back its massive W16 engine advantage by going from 0 to 300 kilometers per hour in around 16 odd seconds around 3.3 seconds faster than this car which takes slightly under 20 seconds but come on I'm comparing a Ferrari with six cylinders with a Veyron with a W16 engine it is unbelievable the kind of thrust this car has and the steering is lovely body control is absolutely amazing and the gearbox is very fast shifting so this is the same gearbox as the one on the SF90 in fact it does shifts in 200 milliseconds that's how fast it is but unlike the SF90 which doesn't have a reverse gear this has a reverse gear in the SF90 there are three electric motors one on both the front wheels and one at the rear axle here we have got only one electric motor the SF90 is heavier because it's all-wheel drive this one is rear wheel drive and I don't know how Ferrari manages to put all that power down because trust me on this and I, I kid you not this car with rear wheel drive is able to put 819 horsepower Mercedes and BMWs uh, I mean 600 horsepower cars need four wheel drive to put all that power down and uh, otherwise they will just twitch and all this car does not twitch there are so many amazing uh, uh, electronics here to just put all that power down so it's Ferrari's famous e-diff okay uh, which manages to put all that power down beautifully well on the rear axle and the thing is the weight distribution is such now that 60% of the weight is at the rear because obviously the engine is at the rear mid-engine front uh, mid-engine here absolutely amazing the gear shifts are so fast this car is very playful so the sf90 actually uses a 4 liter v8 engine with electric assist and it's like 1000 horsepower that's near chiron territory in terms of performance this is near veron territory in terms of performance so basically the sf90 got all the tech 
this car got all the fun and it is so playful it is just amazing point and shoot the ride is obviously on the stiffer side and you can feel that stiffness every time you're driving this car but that is fine you know why because obviously if you want comfort you get a roma and i was driving the roma yesterday and i can tell you this that compared to the roma there's a massive 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 difference in terms of how stiff this is okay look at the aggression of the shifts and brakes are super awesome Okay, the sun is in the face, but we'll still launch it, and off we go. When I leave the throttle, now I can hear some sound from behind, like a hissing sound, which is unbelievably nice. So basically, what has happened is that uh, Ferrari has made this engine so good that this is the best turbo engine from Ferrari. Period. It is just so amazing the way it performs. The weight of this car is actually um, gone up by 130 kgs because I think around 70 kgs for the battery alone and all the associated electronics with the battery adds in total of 130 kgs more. But because this is a six-cylinder engine. when compared to an 8 cylinder engine they have been able to shave off 30 kg so overall the weight has gone up by 100 kg in comparison now i'm just going to compare it to the f8 riboto because that is its predecessor sort of but this car will not make the f8 go out yet eventually it will obviously but why does ferrari have to go downsizing very simply because greta thunberg did a thing and because of which all of us have to suffer jokes aside uh, the thing is that uh, with time ferrari will also go four cylinders then three to one and then completely electric and i'm just wondering once they go completely electric what will happen honestly that will be so disappointing because once they go complete electric na we are so screwed where will the sound come from this beautiful sound of this six cylinder engine well that's something for the future to see but the point is the reason why they are downsizing is to improve the efficiency compared to the f8 which has a v8 engine a 3.9 liter award winning v8 engine this car actually has half the co2 emissions so the co2 emissions have actually dropped from 296 grams per kilometer to act oh my god lambo fan fest happening here there is a green lambo right there these cars are very loud very loud still powered by v10 engine naturally aspirated no turbo that's amazing but then ferrari is obviously living with the times and that's the reason it's time for us to launch left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor level this dual clutch automatic gearbox is super fast which is it's unbelievably quick and then you put the car in a corner you get out of the throttle and it instantly responds there is no hitch there is no lag it's just like super duper fast revving it's very aggressive which brings me to this manual you know switch okay there's a wet mode there's a sport mode there's a race mode there's ct off which is basically traction control off and there's esp off which basically turns off the electronic stability program the thing is that there's no comfort mode on offer here which is not required because honestly this is all about hardcore performance this is a car when you turn off traction control it will be very playful by actually letting you slide along and that's the real fun of such a car okay it's aggressive it's nice it's fun as well and you won't believe it all these cars are very loud here that's the supra that's the volkswagen golf gti okay let me downshift here it actually gives me manual control of things as well and it has got an active rear spoiler so what happens is under heavy braking the rear spoiler actually pops out from behind yeah it does that it actually pops out from behind and i think we have reached sort of no man's land or what there's a lot of uh, confusion happening here because this is so much desert sand at the moment which is obviously expected considering we are on a desert road right now unbelievable oh my god because i'm driving in performance mode and ripping the engine apart this has actually charged the battery all the way switching 22 km so 
the engine can actually charge the battery completely earlier i thought that's not possible but yes it is very much possible because the kind of performance which is there now the thing is apple carplay will show a display here as well as there which means we'll just turn on the display not that you'll be able to see it we just want to turn on the performance display and everything is a fingerprint magnet my fingerprints are like everywhere on all the haptic touch controls right there and there's no 12 volt charging socket so i was like where do i charge my phone i bought my cable it is usb c there's no type c then i was like okay i'll put it uh, in that you know charger bit and that 12 volt no that is also not visible to me at all which means that uh, some things could be better now the interior is a mini sf90 of course and so is the exterior and the whole character of this car is also mini sf90 in that regard and trust me on this this is an absolute beast in the way it performs but this is uh, like uh, i keep forgetting the name of that character Jekyll and Hyde something like that okay it has dual personalities in one scenario you can drive it very smoothly without making any sound whatsoever and then if you want the need for speed you can just get on the throttle and go absolutely ballistic because it's amazing now the thing is turning radius is actually lesser because of the shorter wheelbase and the steering is quite light at lower speed so it makes it very easy to twirl i'm actually driving in qualifying mode right now so what is the concept of qualifying it's very simple in formula one now you have to put the fastest time which is known as qualifying and basis your time now you, you will decide where you are on the grid so there's an aston martin dbx which is stuck right there along with the hyundai santa fe which is also stuck and i can't do anything to help these guys out because obviously uh, a ferrari rear wheel drive will not be able to pull them out but the thing is these people go into the desert and they get stuck they have a shovel they're trying to remove the sand and all that stuff i see so many cars getting stuck in this desert because <laughs> loose sand now what do you expect anyways the ferrari suv will also not do well here because obviously it's more off-roaderish somehow and then so expensive nobody will really want to take it off-road uh the puro song puro sangui I, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the car the rival to this car is obviously the mclaren artura this one right there which is cheaper but then doesn't have the same levels of performance but then for uh, sorry mclaren will come up with a performance edition which will be known as the McLaren Altura LT which will have a lot of performance for lesser money than this car so Ferrari obviously charges a premium but that premium is justified considering the performance they offer and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it into hybrid mode and then we're going to put it in e-drive actually here we are into e-drive and you can see the cluster actually changes the sound is completely gone it becomes so silent now the thing is it has this uh, bridge on the top aero bridge or whatever you want to call it <laughs> no it is not the one in the aircraft so basically it channels air at the rear very nicely and smoothly just uh, above the glass area and from there you can actually see the interior of the car that's kind of cool it has got orange cabling in the engine bay of course high voltage cabling and just is so smooth it's unbelievably refined it's like oh my god we're driving an electric car that is the level of smoothness and refinement i cannot believe a ferrari can be this smooth and right now showing 24 kilometers is the range so fuel efficiency is also improved this will return between four to five kilometers per liter depending on your driving style and how much of that electrical energy you can keep you know using now this has mg uk motor generator unit kinetic formula one cars used to have that which is also known as curse kinetic energy recovery system which obviously recovers power and kinetic energy and puts it back into the battery pack now formula one cars use something known as mg uk H, which is motor generator unit heat which is basically used to power the turbocharger which is kind of interesting and uh, now we are going to launch which means here straight away qualifying mode oh my god there it rose to life left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and off we go you know what the traction control light just does not blink it somehow manages to put all that power down by the way the code name of this car is type f171 and this is not the first v6 powered or six cylinder engine ferrari they had that in 1974 so long long back now the turbo actually is made by the same company which made the turbo for the f40 which was long ago and the turbo is actually shared with the sf90 however the turbochargers are smaller and they spin faster up to 1.8 lakh rotations per minute rpm yeah 1.8 lakh rpm RPM, they're smaller and more efficient by 24% as well and the result is for all to see this is a car which is unbelievably fun unbelievably fast and just very very quick which shifts as well it does not hesitate at all you want the grant it immediately supplies 8500 rpm red line Honestly, this car has made me doubt my love for the 458. The 458 is naturally aspirated V8. Uh, 
around 560 horsepower. This is taking the horsepower game to a new level. In spite of downsizing, I actually like it. I love it. I am so blown away by this car because it is just unbelievable in terms of performance in terms of efficiency in terms of usability in terms of handling there's a low center of gravity the steering is super fast super quick with directional changes and it's a very playful car it is it is the best sports car you can buy today period end of story that is what ferrari has made ferrari has made something which blows your mind i know the ride is on the stiffer side and then obviously uh, you don't get much of a range with the electric motor but the electric motor's job is not to make this car efficient it's just just to make it faster and in that regard it really does its job very well this is super fast with a top speed of 330 kilometers per hour which is unbelievably quick and here downshift It sounds quite good for what is Ah at the end of the day nothing more than a uh, okay we'll take a turn from here itself because there's a dead end nothing more than a V6 engine a V6 engine having this level of grunt who would have imagined but Ferrari is here to deliver now the nose lift function is actually optional not available in this car yeah this particular model but in india i think it's standard in india titanium nut lugs and lot of other things are standard alcantara on the steering this uh, red stitching and what not all of that is standard plus 360 degree camera is also standard on the indian car and i think we are uh, going to the wrong side there is no road there afasal there is absolutely no road there trust me on this yeah there is a dead end which means we have to turn around so basically sand accumulates and then there's a problem have you get into reverse and there you can see okay reverse camera is also nice here we get into first steering has no effort at such a lower speeds which is actually the beauty of the steering wheel that it weighs up consistently it weighs up beautifully well and then obviously it offers a lot of feel and feedback to so what ferrari has done is made a car which is not only fast but has this character as well and in spite of electrifying this car the character is not lost at all it still has that character of a ferrari car it still has the sound the mad rush everything is purely intact here and that is the reason why in spite of this losing two of its cylinders i am not complaining i am happy that this really puts a massive smile on your face with the level of performance and grunt you would not really expect from a car of this car type and there you can see okay there's no rear wheel steering there's just acres of grip it just grips 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 unless and until you get really hard and mashy on the throttle and once you do that now obviously it will start to slide but for the most part i have nothing to complain about in terms of the power train package so basically it doesn't feel turbocharged it doesn't feel electrified and the turbo does not try or rather the twin turbos do not try to become the hero here neither does the battery or the electric motor what they do is they assist and when their job is done they just leave they don't try to stay longer than they are needed and that's the reason why this car performs fantastically well because the whole power train is the hero here not anything individually everything comes okay it says recharging completed so basically now what we are having is we are having 25 kilometers of ev on range because i'm driving on electric uh, sorry in qualifying mode which is drawing all the fuel that's telling me the range is now 69 kilometers so here we are going to get into e drive and there all of a sudden the world becomes more silent let's actually use the washer fluid right there there the spray actually comes out from the wipers itself and cleans the windscreen in no time at all What a beautiful car! The dual character of this car really pleases you. It's exciting, and then here, okay, I'm actually having full battery use, so I'm accelerating completely. And there, it's actually still on battery power. It is not kicking in the engine, and there, one thirty. Oh my God, I'm on battery power at really high speeds as well. So when you have juice, it does not hesitate to keep going on and on and on and on. And that is again fantastic. Ferrari makes cars which are really beautiful, fast, unlike Lamborghini, which is. just sleeping for no reason ferrari actually takes the effort of making cars really fast and really blowing your mind the waiting period on this car is actually around 1 and 1/2 years and the price is almost 6 crore so this doesn't have the full assetto fiar assetto ferrano what i don't know how to pronounce it ferrano package it has the assetto ferrano essential package so i don't think it has cup tires it doesn't even have that magna ride suspension which is obviously more stiff so that's more track oriented but this car definitely is manageable on the road and then you don't have no i mean you don't need the nose lift function at least here let me do one thing let me actually open the window ah uh, you can't hear a thing that is the level of silence
Okay, so what you're going to do, we're going to get into qualifying mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, and off we go. I don't know what is that hissing sound which comes. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to get into manual for the gearbox. And here, when I get into manual, it holds a red line. It does not make a shift, which is amazingly beautiful. Brakes are very strong here. So basically, the braking system, we'll talk about the braking system. It's a lovely car. What a fantastic machine. This Ferrari really blows your mind with the level of performance, thrust and... Second gear, it does roughly 120 kilometers per hour. That is the kind of performance. That's the kind of grunt it has to offer. And then now we are going to apply hard onto the brakes. Oh my God, my face came out. 1.1 G. Thing is, it has got ABS Evo, which is Ferrari speak for brake by wire tech for the braking system, which is able to apply brakes on independent wheels and obviously monitor the ABS and also do that as well. So guys, this is my vlog of the Ferrari 296 GTB, which by the way has a tray at the front, which is basically done purely for aerodynamics. So it pushes air below to the vortex generators just to make sure that the airflow happens properly and uh, I can keep going on and on about this car because the drive experience has so many new things to talk about but if this is the future sign me up as long as there's an internal combustion engine because at the end of the day this 2.9 liter v6 is what keeps everyone's head held high and makes this Ferrari an absolute beast of a machine if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel I will see you guys in the next video Real soon. Bye-bye.